It's Nancy welcoming you to Garden Scroll. It's April the 19th and this month is just going right on by. We've had some cool days, jacket weather at least, but I have got to get out here and get some things done. And for me anymore, it's easier to do it when it's a little bit cool than when it's a little bit hot. <laughs> so, but I wanted to show you, look, this is the uh, blue flax that I planted last year and from seed and it it didn't bloom last year but it made this pretty little plant and now it's blooming and I'm gonna get a little closer on these sweet little blooms and now the snowball bush has got big white snowballs on it looking great Look at this beautiful hosta. If I'm going to keep this little dove in here, I'm going to have to put her on a taller little plant stand. We are supposed to get rain tonight or tomorrow, and I'm hoping to go ahead and, um, well, thin this out, but I'm hoping I'll be able to take some of it. I'm looking for weed. I saw it and then lost it, but right there it is, that little sheep shire type thing or, or um, clover. But I'm hoping to be able to transplant it and since it's going to be wet, sometimes they just transplant and don't even mind it a bit when it's either misting or right after a rain. And did I show you that my husband's radishes are coming up? Oh, here's another big old um, weed actually. It's a weed, but it's one of the little... Um, clovers or not clover but I don't know what you call this we called them sheep shires when I was a kid but anyway they don't belong in this garden there's another one I had several come up this year I'm not sure where they came from but I don't want them in here But I was noticing that I still have enough of this that I could take some of it while it's wet too and put it in a different area if I can get myself around to actually do that. And there's a tree which I have coming up everywhere and they will be for quite some time. There's another. So actually I wasn't going to come out just to show me weeding. <laughs> come out to show you me weeding. Weed weeding so we'll move along and I'll show you something else I'm not sure what yet but you know things are just coming on all the time and actually they seem to love that it got a little bit cooler so I think that's great can you see that beautiful alyssum over there it's another thing I want to definitely divide and put in other places and I want to do that while the ground is wet to either this time or the next rain we get as soon as I can. I got several things planted yesterday but I still have a lot more that need to be planted today. I don't know if I've shown you this but uh, I kept this little spike through the winter in the house. <laughs> And then uh, I put these other little plants in there, which are doing fair. I did notice that this one is looking terrible, and I'm pretty sure a snail has gotten to it. That's what happens in this area, several areas in my garden. So I'll probably have to replace that. But I do love this little 
coleus and I love it with the, the color of this um, lipstick pink color that I have in the strawberry pot so that's what I had put around it there too this one looks a little puny also so I don't know if these will make it but I hope they will and and I'll just probably plan on replacing this one I, I'm pretty sure it's not going to make it So I still have so many plants to plant, but you can tell by the looks of this where I saved the empty uh, grow pots that I've done quite a bit of planting. And this little side over here was full. Now it only has one in it, so I've got to keep going. This is the little plant I got from my friend Susie. She said she wanted to be sure and get another one of these, and I saw one, so I thought, I'll just go ahead and get that now, and I found a snail in it, so I put it up here, and hopefully keep the snails out. I've got to get these planted, though, all of these, because I do not want to come out here and find out that the snails got them, and I didn't get to plant them. They won't take them out quite that fast, but they'll take them out much faster than I want them to because I never want them to be taken out. The sweet William are beginning to bloom. Irises are in bloom. Some of my peonies are in bloom. And look at this lovely Major Wheeler Honeysuckle. It has just done so great. I guess it loves the cooler weather. It's just shining in color. I'm going to go around to the other side and let you see it because it looks so great. But also I wanted to point out that the crepe myrtles are putting on their pretty new spring color. They'll turn to green, but right now they're just looking bright at the color they are now and there's some of the clematis in bloom and as I'm going out to the major wheel or honeysuckle the back side of it or front side whichever it's in the uh, actually in the back I guess it's the back of the house and that was the front from the house and we're going to the back but look at this beautiful rose right here and then right in front of it there are the uh, Hawaiian coral peonies there's actually some roses beginning to bloom and then look at this beautiful clematis here on this little obelisk if I can get to let me just kind of work around here till I can get a place where you can actually see it So pretty and I love my smoke bush I told you before but I didn't think I would want one but I love it the color it's dark like when the Sun's not shining on it turns almost bright red or at least a maroon sparkly garnet red and then this is another one of the clematis blooms so we are coming up on, I just turn around and there it will be, that beautiful, beautiful Major Wheeler Honeysuckle growing up an old umbrella trellis. I'm using it for a trellis. The Wedula bush is looking great. And I went around to the other side of it because I think this is the first time that I can say that I actually have something planted in this little pot when the Wildula bloomed. And I'm going to just turn around. Because I'm seeing this pretty clematis. This is the first bloom for it this season. It's looking great. And there right behind it are some pretty iris. And look at this little iris. I think you could safely say 
she wore blue velvet. And I'm seeing a little peony bloom right here. How, how sweet. And look, I was hoping before our cold weather came, some of my seeds would come up. And they have, not all of them by any means, but several of them. That's great. I may have already showed you, but I used a different... Wait a minute, bees trying to get me. But uh, I used a different um, plant food, and it was too strong for these new little plants. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what happened there. So these will have to be taken out and new ones put in. I hate that, but you know, things like that happen in the garden. You just have to, well, it keeps you on your toes, to say the least. And here is where I worked yesterday and planted. I planted lipstick pink uh, in patience here. And I also, I'm planning on putting some of the probably watermelon colors or a similar color that will take the pretty pink out of this and just blend and and look beautiful right here is what I'm hoping and then I also went ahead and put some impatience in these little pots I think these are the red with the little uh, white in the center called red star and this is how I do ferns this is actually the best that it's ever done a fern for me oh it's sad look at that it looks like it's dead but look at that there's a little tiny green right there and then this is this one actually came out and then decided no I don't really think I want to stay here <laughs> but and I'm trying some little starts from my uh, Mexican flame vine here and one of them has decided oh yeah this is where I want to be this year and I put more of the Red Star uh, Impatience right here in this one. I don't have anything in the bottom part of this yet, but I put some little plants here. I think this one little Calabricoa is the only one that stayed of the three that I bought. I had a yellow, bright, pretty yellow one in there. And also in this top one, I had a pretty purple one, but those are... The root of them are still there, but I've never got them to just come back from the root, but we'll see. And then I planted some some more plants in here, and they're not doing great in the cold weather. This is an angelonia, but if they just make it through, and sometimes, like I say, they oftentimes start better when it's a little cooler than when it's too hot for them. They really don't like to have to get used to the heat and be transplanted at the same time. That's a little too rough on them. Sometimes when I look at what I did, I think, how could that have taken me most of the day? <laughs> but, and also, though, this is another thing I did. I told you I would put impatience in this, and I'm, I tried to put some gravel around it to kind of sturdy it up but I think I'm going to have to put some more stakes or rebar or something in there to hold it up better still although it does have these tiny little ones and I had to make get tiny ones because they have to go through that little hole right there but I think it will help anchor that pot down hope that's my hope and then I went ahead and just filled this little pot up with white impatience and I think it's going to look great I hope it will I just can't imagine that it won't it's so pretty right now it even looks good and they're barely showing they're so small but they will probably grow and fill out and be gorgeous white is so great in the shade it's just like as if you came out and put lights on. they just brighten up everything and then of course I had to go around and uh, water all my little newly planted seedlings this looks like it could use some more water so I may put some more on it right now in a minute and I also noticed that they didn't come up yet but hopefully they still will this is my um, 
annual phlox and I'm hoping I get to see it this year. I planted it too late last year and they never did. They made little plants but they never got big enough to do anything but hopefully they will this year. And I think I've already showed this to you when only one of them was blooming but now there's two there and it's looking good. This is always reminiscent of my sister Clara because she loves the roosters. And one of my Princess Diana Clematis is blooming. I have two, and it may be because this one is, has a little more shade that it's a darker color, but they're a little bit, this is a way beyond pink, I think. But the other one is more brighter pink. This is more of a maroon color, but very pretty. And my little ITOH. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I told. <laughs> anyway, it's a peony and it's it's a beautiful peony and it's beginning to open its little bud or bloom. It's a bud that's fixing to be a bloom. And there's more seed coming up in this little pot. Let me show you how I get sidetracked in the garden. I do this when I clean house too. See this little pot of four red star impatiens? I decided I'm going to put them right here in this little pot. They're going to look great too. And then I thought, wait a minute, I better not put those until I, I get some insecticide ready because I do not want the snails to take them out before they get a chance to grow. And I'm hoping that will help. But okay, so then I went to get my... Um, my insecticide, which I keep in this little well house. At least that's where I had it this time. <laughs> and so on the way back from getting it, I saw this. And I thought, oh, look how they're arranged. The flowers opened up just right around this little decor piece wouldn't that make a beautiful picture so then I had to go get the camera and take this picture then I had to take my jacket off because it was getting warm when you're working it gets warm you know you know that if you're garden you definitely know that and so I thought well maybe we won't have very much more cooler weather maybe I better just go ahead and divide this little Blissom. So I did. That's, you know, much less than what it was, but still very pretty. And I put it, oh, and I also forgot I'm going to have to get these down in the ground a little bit farther so that won't tipple over again for the second time. But I put it right in this little pot. I went around to the front of it so you can kind of see it a little better. So now I have it in these two pots, and I also put it in this little pot. And I know that these will not stay yellow very much longer. They're already beginning to uh, fade away, the yellow is. But next spring, they'll be there. It's a perennial. It'll come back and give us that pretty spring color that we're so anxious to see after a winter's rest. Not only did I put it in this little pot, but I also put it in this little pot. And then I thought, oh, I was also going to put just a little piece of it over here. So it is a very small piece, but I thought, well, maybe it will, it will grow there and, and just proliferate and be big and beautiful it could you know and then I thought oh and of course of course I was going to put it here because blue and yellow oh my goodness even though my little flax will last all summer long this little <coughs> this little alyssum while it will too it will last and come back next spring after it goes dormant and dies back somewhat but it will also be there to 
welcome spring again and to get back with this little blue flax. Now I'm going to anchor that little pot or that little pot stand, plant stand, in the ground a little bit and then get back hopefully to my original job. Look at the pretty white blooms of the fire thorn bush. For some reason, I rarely catch this in its white bloom. Of course, its real glory is in the fall when it has the pretty bright orange berries. But this pretty white is not something to be missed. So I just finished planting the plants that I had purchased quite a while ago, actually. And, uh... I feel good about it, even though I just barely made it before the sun went completely down. Please be sure to like and to subscribe to the channel.